dwindling global resources, rigorous cancer research, and lengthy pharmaceutical drug discovery. The clock is ticking and ordinary computers just aren't fast enough to solve these global issues. And that's a problem. It's not that ordinary computers can't solve this problem, it would just take them the age of the universe to, to try to figure it out. We don't, we don't have that long. Uh, so, you know, we want answers fast. And so quantum computers can speed up these kind of uh, calculations. What if quantum computers could solve world problems in days, even hours? We recently sat down with the University of Southern California professor Daniel Ladar on the USC campus, home to the very first operational quantum computer in all of academia, to find out just how extraordinary this quantum computer really is. Pretty much everybody who studied physics in high school knows about Newton's equations, F equals MA, but that is only a very approximate description of reality. And the, actually the more correct equation is what's called the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics, which tells you how particles, electrons, photons, atoms, nuclei, how they behave. Simply put, quantum computing says goodbye to silicon chips. Instead, it uses atomic particles such as electrons and photons to store and transmit information in the form of qubits. Those quantum bits are very special. They uh, can exist in what we call superposition states. It's basically coexisting in two or more states at once. So the standard example that a lot of people mention in this context is uh, Schrodinger's cat, the same Schrodinger from the Schrodinger equation. He invented this thought experiment where there's a cat that can coexist in a state of being both dead and alive at the same time, which is very strange. And of course, we don't see this in real life. But hold up, achieving superposition is difficult because the quantum computer is the diva of the computing world. It only performs when there's no disturbances, no vibrations, no solar rays, and near absolute zero temperature. And that's why it's very hard to build quantum computers because decoherence destroys superpositions. But we need these superpositions, that's sort of the secret sauce that gives rise to the quantum computational power and speed up. So USC is unique in that uh, we have access to two types of quantum computers. In fact, one of these is on USC premises at our Information Sciences Institute in Marina del Rey. And this is called the D-Wave quantum annealer computer. We've had that machine there since 2011. And very recently, we added IBM quantum computer to that list. The IBM quantum computer is not on premises here. We access it through the cloud. And what do we do at USC? Errors are processes that destroy superpositions in quantum computing. A lot of our work here is about trying to fix this error problem using error correction. So we spot the errors and we correct them using all sorts of tricks that researchers here are working on. And there's widespread consensus in the quantum computing community that error correction, quantum error correction, is essential and necessary in order for quantum computers to eventually perform the kind of computational feats that people hope that they will be able to do for us, like decryption, like simulating drugs, simulating exotic materials like room temperature superconductors. Let's say you want to discover a superconductor that is a material that transmits electricity without any losses, any friction, at room temperature, at ordinary temperatures. That would be an absolute revolution for humanity. We would be able to transmit energy frictionlessly. Power grids would not lose any power due to friction. We would be able to transport people and goods without friction using magnetically levitated trains. So at USC, we are the only university that has access to two types of quantum computers. This is a very special situation in academia and even outside of academia. We have roughly 25 different faculty with different levels of engagement and interest. And many students and postdocs who are working on quantum computing related problems. So it's a very active and thriving community that, that we have here at USC. It's a great place to be working in this field with tons of uh, excitement and people working on different angles all the way from building the hardware to thinking about the most abstract questions related to algorithms and computational complexity and, and things like that. Professor Ladar has been at the forefront of advancing quantum computing, making significant contributions to both theory and application. So whether it's revolutionizing healthcare, energy, or security, quantum computing has the power to reshape the future of our world. And engineers like Ladar are just scratching the surface.
Quantum computing is probably not going to be like AI in the sense that everybody's going to use it for everyday tasks. The way we understand quantum computing right now is it's basically an accelerator, a computational accelerator for really hard computational problems. That said, you never know. We're at the cusp of getting to the point where we can actually start to do useful things with quantum computers. And just like a qubit, I too can be in two states at once. Pretty cool, which means you can process data faster than you can hit subscribe. If you enjoyed this week's deep dive into quantum computing, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe for more incredible engineering news.